This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The Lighting Source, major line distributor of commercial and industrial lighting, including hard to find bulbs and fixtures, as well as a broad range of LED products. With 35 years' experience servicing lighting needs, The Lighting Source proudly sponsors Sports Files. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Memphis Grizzlies rookie Jarnell Stokes. Hey, hey, the Grizzlies tipped off the new season last night with their home opener against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Not a whole lot of new faces on this year's roster. There is, of course, eight-time All-Star and future Hall of Famer Vince Carter. And then there are the two rookies, Jordan Adams and Memphian Jarnell Stokes. Stokes is a very familiar name and face to local basketball fans. He starred in the Bluff City as a prep player and put together a solid career at Tennessee, where he blossomed into a serious NBA prospect after a breakout junior year with the Vols a season in which Stokes dominated opponents during a stretch of the NCAA tournament that drew the eyes of NBA scouts. Stokes, a fierce competitor and extremely hard worker, would be drafted by his hometown team, the Grizzlies, and now gets to play for pay in front of friends and family. Today, Jarnell Stokes on his expectations for himself as a rookie in the most prestigious professional basketball league in the world. It's next on Sports Files. Jarnell, great to see you again. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Nice to be here. What's it been like your first month as a professional basketball player playing for the Grizzlies? Uh, it's been great. It's been great. I, I really enjoy being with the guys. You know, it's, I want to say it's been up and down, but I've made it up in my mind that I won't allow myself to have bad days. You know, I, no matter what happens, no matter what coach throws at me, no matter what the other team throws at me, I've made it up in my mind that I'm going to smile and enjoy this rookie experience. You know, a lot of people say um, sometimes the rookie treatment, the slanders, the different, you know, certain right, things that right. we go through as rookies. Uh, you know, I just, I'm embracing it. You know, it's part of NBA tradition, so you have to embrace it. So have they, they treated you well, or have they said, hey, rook, do this, hey, rook, do that? Oh, they've treated me well. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go, I will, after I leave here, I'm about to go with Vince Carter to go eat. You know, things like that, that normally you wouldn't get out of the teams. And, and um, I feel like these vets have treated us well, but at the same time, you know, have to treat us like rookies too, and we right, understand right. that. Well, when did you get past the, when you first started practicing with these guys in camp, when did you get past the, wow, look at this, Vince Carter, Zach Randolph, Mike, did, I mean, was there that period, and how quickly did you get over it? Uh, it definitely was that period. Um, just in pickup, you know, when these guys first came in town, I would say as a rookie, even though I'm from here, a lot of guys leave and, and, you know, maybe next summer I may be in and out, but this summer I was here the entire time, you know. So after I got drafted, I watched myself get drafted, and I'm here at the FedEx Forum the next day. So um, I've been here this entire time and just watching these guys come in and out, it's just been amazing just having a locker right next to Tayshaun Prince. And I watched them in middle school win a ring in Detroit. So. Um, you no, know, just memories like that, you know, being able to talk to these guys has been surreal right right now. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot from these guys, and they, they offer you advice? Oh, all the time, all the time. Um, you know, I understand right now they're about winning, and um, and so right now as a rookie, they want me to learn and, and, and you know, just be ready when my time comes because you never know. And that's the advice I keep getting from everyone, just right. be ready. You right. never know. I mean, it's a game, it's basketball. You want to go out there and have fun, but obviously it's now a business. You're a professional, you have a contract, you make money. Uh, was it hard to make that transition from what it was like in college playing at Tennessee as an amateur to now being a professional and being a business? I would say college is nothing like the NBA. I would say college 
helped me out some, but not as much as um, Summer League did. I feel like Summer League helped me out a lot. I feel like pickup basketball helped me out a way more than college helped me. So, um, you know, just if you throw out Summer League, I don't know if I would have been able to make a transition like I did now. Right, and the right. coaches and the, the front office, the guys are telling me that I'm doing a great job and I've progressed way more than they thought I would. But, you know, just as a player, I want to see myself on the court. But right now, you know, I, I don't mind just cheering these guys on. Definitely have such great teammates. Beside having the experience of Summer League, as you said earlier, being here, being from Memphis, you hit FedEx Forum the next day after your draft. I mean, you're, you're getting accoladed very quickly where other yeah. rookies have to go from somewhere else in the country normally and go yeah. to another city. It's all new for them. Yeah. How much of a benefit was that for you to have that already? Um, you know, I, I would say it's a benefit because I know where everything is. You know, I, I feel like I know which neighborhood not to go to, which neighborhood is good for me. I, I know where, I, where to go to eat. Um, you know, everywhere I go, people are saying, hey, hello, you know, things like that. I already feel comfortable when I walk outside the doors of the FedEx Forum. So, um, so you can concentrate more on basketball. You don't have to worry about all the other things that are happening. Uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, I already knew where I wanted to stay. Things like that, the transition period for me, I mean, I had already made a transition. This, right, this right. is where I want to live one day anyway. <laughs> right. On the court, when you finally got to camp, what was that one welcome to the NBA Jarnell moment? Um, Did Zebo pop say, you maybe, or what happened? He took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> and he spoiled it. <laughs> yeah, I would say, um, you know, Zebo constantly throwing bowls, and next thing you know, I'm getting called for fouls, you know, and that's this is you're retaliating, right? You're, you're not, not even retaliating, just kind of, I, I would say somewhat retaliating, but you have to understand this guy's an all-star. You can't really retaliate at an all-star, but I'm definitely competing in practice. And You're not backing down to anybody. Don't back down, but as a rookie, you have to understand that that whistle's coming fast. <laughs> definitely right, for right. an all-star guy. And um, I, I guess that would be my, my one moment is when, you know, just constantly you know, coming home with a bruised chest mm -hmm. from <laughs> taking Zebo bowls. And then, yeah, Marcus All, he comes to pick up. He was overseas for a while. He comes to pick up and he's toying with the ball all over your head. And, <laughs> you know, I felt like it was tunning me, but that's just how he plays. Can you believe that since you, you grew up in Memphis, you obviously prepped here in Memphis and starred, can you believe that guy, Marcus All, is the guy that played at Lausanne? Uh, yeah, I saw some games of him playing. He, he was kind of over. Not, not the monster he yeah, is yeah, like he's, today. He's, he's gotten so much better. I, it's, it's unbelievable. Whatever training he did, I, that's the guy I need to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy. Speak, speaking of training, what's the difference between training now as opposed to t at Tennessee? And, of course, you've always had individual trainers. Uh, we've talked before on my radio show about Tony Sarwar. Yeah. So you've always been doing that, but from a pro, from the training regimen here to at the University of Tennessee, what's the difference like? Um, I would say the difference would be the speed. You know, I'm such a, a faster player. I'm such a, a less complacent player. I feel like right now I'm as hungry as I've ever been. Mm -hmm. And um, the speed of the game, the mental part of the game, every single move that I make, I'm envisioning guys coming at me. I'm envisioning a play being ran through my mind as I do workouts. And back then I used to just work out to get up 500 shots, but now every shot is like, I'm, I just ran a play like a game shot. So. The first time you put on the uniform, what was it like? Um, no, I don't, I don't want to talk about my first experience. Uh, you know, coach subbed me in and then subbed me right back out and the crowd kind of cheered for me and it was like, Jarnell coming to the game. And that was, that was definitely, um, I definitely enjoyed, you know, seeing fans, seeing Tennessee fans and Memphis fans say, we love you, Jarnell, and all the posters that's been in the crowd, I enjoyed that. But, um, you know, my first time putting on the jersey, I would say was, it was in Milwaukee and it was definitely a, a, an experience. I remember, um, man, Jordan Adams, the other rookie, after the game, we, we, we kind of stunk it up. You know, it was, it was kind of bad. And we were tired. You know, we weren't used to sitting down right. for 40 minutes right. and then coming into the game. And it was, it was a terrible experience, I would say. But 
the next game was against Houston, and, and we did an amazing job. I think me and Jordan played our butts off, and, and it paid off. You know, we're finally getting used to sitting down and then depending on adrenaline that the fans give us to continue. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that because it's obvious the season got started last night. You have so many players that have been around for a long time that are ahead of you on the depth chart. You're fighting in practice every day to impress the coaches to get the PT. Because yeah. there's going to be a lot of times where maybe you get limited action or you don't get any PT at all. Are you ready to accept that mentally? How, how do you uh, approach that? Um, it's, it's, it's rough. You know, it's definitely rough. And you, you won't see it on my face. You know, on the inside, it could be tearing me apart, but on my face, I always smile and, and make sure I do the right things and be a good teammate. But, you know, I just have to understand. Tayshaun Prince, for example, this guy won two rings and, and has been in the league for 17, 18 years. And, and he gave me advice. He said, I sat out my rookie year. It wasn't until some guys got in trouble till I got a chance to play. Right. So uh, just things like that. I, I understand Zebo. I think he used to back up um, Rasheed Wallace. I think he wasn't. I think he was sitting out his rookie year. So things like that. And that's, that's everyone pays me, their dues, right? Everyone pays their dues. And now that's making me even more hungry. That's why I speak on I'm more hungry than I ever been. You know, I, I see these guys, man, they're they're playing, they're having fun. And the chemistry is so great, I want to be a part of it. I feel like I'm a part of it already, but I want to take a bigger role to be a part of it, and I just want to work harder to get that position. What specifically are you working on the most to round out your game, to make it a better game? Um, specifically, I would say just continue doing what I do well. You know, I, you can say jump shot, you can say um, you know, conditioning and anything like that. I feel like I've addressed it already. Mm -hmm. Now it's about applying that to the game and fitting in with the chemistry. You know, doing what the coaches want me to do. If the coaches don't want me taking jump shots and want me to get 10 rebounds, um, I have to do that for the team. Just fit in with the chemistry because our chemistry is so great. You can tell the guys been playing together for a long time. Speaking of the, the coaches, you, you let me to the next question. What specifically has, has Coach Yeager said to you? What Bob Thornton works with the bigs. What has he said to you? What do they want you to do? Well, it all started this summer. You know, that, they helped me out a lot, just getting me used to some of the play calling, uh, terminology, um, what they want from me, right. defining my role, things like that. They've, they've helped us rookies out a lot, just being around and constantly being in Memphis. So um, I would say what they've said to me was just be ready. You know, I, you, you're going to hear me say that a lot, but I don't feel like they've given up on me any at all. I feel like they're basically letting me pay my dues right now. And right. I have to work to get to where I want to get. You followed this team. It's your hometown team. You know how good they are. The core unit's back. The additions of Vince Carter, the rookies, yourself and Jordan Adams. Zebo calls it the deepest team he's been with since he arrived in Memphis. How good do you think this team could be? Uh, I think I think um, you know we can be as good as we allow ourselves to. You know, I feel like when when we we have one of the best defenses. Had no idea we had so much depth when I first came to the team, and I've been here. I, I grew up here, so I grew up a Memphis fan. You went I, to the games. Went to the games. Um, went to almost every game my senior year. So, just I had no idea. I had no idea that. You know, John Lure was as good as he was. I had no idea that Costa was things like that. You don't see the bench guys and mm -hmm. what they've done in the league on other teams. And Costa Koof has got a double, had averaged a double double in Denver. That's a great point. I think a lot of people don't understand <laughs> yeah. that, and not too many will because they won't see it firsthand. But you're you're experiencing this firsthand by going up against these guys every day in practice. Yeah, I'm competing with them every day in practice and. Like you said, I was once a fan, and I didn't even know this. You know, as a basketball player, now I'm saying that these guys are working hard, and you see why they're getting paid like they're getting paid, and why they're getting minutes. Because, I mean, they're they're, they're pretty good at what they do. No question. I've known you now for quite some time, and we've had a lot of conversations. And and you're a you're a top notch guy. I mean, I think a lot of people know that. Thank and now you. you're a pro athlete, so there's going to be people. Hey, Jarnell, remember me? Or, yeah, you know, I, we went to school together. And this, it, it just happens with pro athletes. How do you 
continue to stay on the straight and narrow, do the right things, not let outside influences affect you? You know, first of all, you know, when you say that, I would like to thank my dad. You know, without my dad, I couldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be where I am right Shout now. Shout out to all the dads out there, right? Yeah, every every child needs a dad, yes. honestly. And I feel like I wouldn't be where I am without my dad. He was well strict said. on me. And um, so when a guy presents his plan, so-called cousins, um, uncles, friends, hey, dad, I need you to um, make this, you know, that's handle great. this for me. And that's and that's like my best friend, and he, he take care of things like that for you me. You have your pop, you have an older brother yeah. that you live with. Um, that's nice. They're nice to have the right people around you, and I think that's uh, it's a shame for, for people that don't have yeah. that because it's a different circumstance. Yeah. Well, again, do you, do you, you pinch yourself or are you over that period now? That you not only are a pro player in the greatest league in the world in basketball, but you're playing for your hometown team. What is it going to be like, though, each game when you get into a game to have these people who have always backed you up, backing you up here in your hometown? Oh, it, it'll be amazing. I'm already getting that feeling right now. Warm-ups, guys constantly calling my names. And normally the guy at the end of the rotation doesn't get that treatment right. at all. <laughs> so right now I'm, I'm just embracing it, but I'm also understanding that, you know, I have a job to do. And, um, you know, eventually I want to perform. But right now I understand my role. Um, and I, I just... You're good being able to separate it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very good. I understand that, you know... The, okay. We're going to wrap it up. We do something called Five for the Road. Okay. I'm going to ask you five different questions, kind of the first thing that comes to mind. And we're going to learn a little bit more about Jordan L. Stokes. Okay. Away from the basketball court. What is your favorite professional sports team? You can't say the Grizzlies. Uh, St. Louis Rams. The uh, St. Louis Rams. Yeah. Greatest show on turf. You know, yeah. I grew up doing the Marshall Fall, Kurt Warner. Tory Holt days. Um, now, Isaac Bruce, of course. Isaac Bruce played from at here. Memphis, yeah. University yeah. of Memphis. Yes. Your favorite professional athlete of all time? Um, I would have to say, I want to say Shaq. Uh, growing up, I always thought I was going to be seven foot big, and um, you know, it didn't turn out me being in seven foot. Yeah, but you're so you're so. I small. just love the dominance he <laughs> plays with. You know, I just he plays no, I like a bulldozer. I understand. You know, I, I try to emulate his game right. somewhat to a certain degree. All right, you've done a great job emulating it. What is your favorite music or or genre of music or an artist that you like to listen to maybe before a game? Um, you know, this will throw a lot of people off, but I, I like old school music, whether it's old school R and B and old school hip hop. I just appreciate the guys who started. Right. You know, this whole R&B. Old school R&B. You, you talk in Motown, the sound of Philadelphia, TSOP, and then you get into early rap like Sugar Hill Gang, guys like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, cool J that really yeah. started off. That's good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear old, old school because I'm old school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time? Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm... Is there a sports movie that you... Man, it's, it, it just it lost my mind. I wanted to say American Gangster, but that, that doesn't sound right on TV. Well, Denzel Washington, he's great in that movie. Yeah, I, I'm a Denzel okay, Washington well, fan. So. American Gangster, nothing wrong with that. It's a movie. Yeah, okay. How about your favorite TV show? What do you like to watch? Favorite TV show would be Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Things. Still? Yeah. You've yeah. probably watched every episode like 10 times. Yeah, old school. It's kind of like <laughs> me with Seinfeld. I watch the same one every time. Yeah. Jordan, listen, it, it, it's been great covering you in high school, in college, and Thank now you. obviously as a professional here with the Grizzlies. Thank Thanks you. so much for your time. Thank you. We appreciate yes, it. Sir. We'll take a quick break. Overtime is coming up next. I feel the need, the need for speed. Remember that? It was a line uttered by the Tom Cruise character Maverick in the motion picture Top Gun. Of course, if you're familiar with the movie, Top Gun was about fighter pilots. Well, the blue skies don't have a monopoly on speed. 
And a few weeks ago, Speed and Power was showcased at Memphis International Raceway during the 2014 Summit Racing Equipment Super Series World Championship. In one of the classes, 48 of the top junior dragsters in the country were in action, including Millington's own Tyler Poindexter, a 2012 and 2014 MIR champion. Tyler won three times on the circuit this year, and while this particular day wasn't kind to the young dragster, his future looks awfully bright. I had dirt car raced uh, for just a little bit and realized I couldn't afford that. So a buddy of mine that I worked with invited me to come uh, to the racetrack and then let me drive one of his cars. So I was hooked then, just like a fish in a, in a lure, I was hooked on drag racing. So I, if you'd asked me if we'd ever been a world champ uh, at that point, I wouldn't even know what you were talking about. Uh, but uh, it's, it's been a blessing for us to be able to uh, to grow as a family and be as a family team and, and get to where we are now. Now Tyler, uh, he was the track champion this year, Super Series champion. Uh, he won the Division II championship to get to where we are now at 16 cars. And this weekend he's in contention of being a world champion as well. The publicity is probably not in the Memphis area to get there. Uh, we are going to run out. That's not something I've ever really considered. It's uh, been more family fun. Uh, just building memories with my family uh, that we can share later down the road. Uh, that's a possibility, I guess, being in the right spotlight, that could happen. I'm not really concerned with them driving. Uh, they're actually safer in this car than they are in a car on the street. Uh, they have bars all over, they got five point uh, seat belt, uh, helmet, neck restraint, gloves. I mean, they're, they're well suited up, so if they were to have a wreck, they could get hurt, but probably not as bad as you would on the street. I got started by watching my dad and seeing other people run these cars, junior dragsters. He was a racer, he drove a Nova, and now he's driving a Nesta. What class? Uh, foot brake, where when the tree comes down, he leaves off of uh, his own foot, not by a button. My brother started by seeing me racing, and he wanted me and him to race together. And then we started to be competitive and really competitive. He wanted to win the world finals, and when he was there, he won it, and he got to win a bunch of stuff in a brand new car. And what's your goal for this weekend? My goal this weekend is to win the World Finals just like he did. The thing I like about racing is the adrenaline going down the track and winning at the end of the day. Tell us what happened. We did what we used to do, just go up there and do our regular routine. And then it, did, it went well. I won. Then second round came around and we did a usual routine, but we didn't come out with the victory. I'm extremely proud of my boy. Uh, he's he's such a better racer than I ever thought about being. And we're just excited to be here and make it this far, and uh, you know we'll just try again next year. Before we leave you tonight, it's been an extremely rough month with the passing of some well-known sports figures with local ties. John Bull Bramlett, the former Memphis State football standout who went on to NFL fame and was the runner-up to Joe Namath for Rookie of the Year, died at age 73. The former All-Pro linebacker turned evangelist had his life chronicled in the documentary The John Bramlett Story, Taming the Bull. We also lost legendary basketball player Charlie Palk at the age of 68. Palk was a legend at old Lester High School. 
He was the seventh overall pick in the 1968 NBA draft and first ever chosen by the Milwaukee Bucks. Three years later, Polk was dealt to Cincinnati for Oscar Robertson. His NBA career was done by 1972. And just this past Sunday, 22-year-old Cardinals rookie outfielder Oscar Taveras, along with his girlfriend, was killed in a car accident in the Dominican Republic. Taveras, who played part of the last two seasons in Memphis with the Redbirds, was on the Cardinals' 25-man playoff roster and contributed to the team's run into the NLCS. He was one of baseball's top overall prospects. And that'll do it for now. Happy Halloween, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The Lighting Source, major line distributor of commercial and industrial lighting, including hard-to-find bulbs and fixtures, as well as a broad range of LED products. With 35 years' experience servicing lighting needs, The Lighting Source proudly sponsors Sports Files.